Okay, for uh, Sergeant at Arms at the Dakota Dome, at the Dome Clubhouse, uh, I'd like to, Jim Wilson, you gonna be around? Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes, that you'll be Sergeant at Arms. Okay, okay, so we got Jim down for that. Thank you. Um, we now have the privilege of having Megan Jarko uh, talk about greening vermilion. And so, uh, Megan, why don't you come on up here? And hopefully you've been able to see some of the, the, the items on the table here and look those over here. So, thank you. Thank you. So I should say, so I'm Megan Jarko. Um, my day job is here at the university. I chair the Department of Sustainability and Environment, and I'm also the chair of Greening Vermilion. What I'm gonna talk about is Greening Vermilion. And if as I'm talking, you have any questions about any of the things, feel free to interrupt me as we go along, and I'm happy to um, answer any questions. And so on your table are some of the materials that you'll see on the slides. There's, um, I have more of them if people want more. I kind of have put one of most of the things on the, um, table. So Green and Vermilion, uh, we're about four years old and our mission is to engage our community in creating a more sustainable Vermilion. Um, and so there were environmental organizations in town, but having one kind of focused on um, sustainability was something that was um, not here. And so we came together to make it. And one of the things that was the impetus for starting Greening Vermilion was through um, Earth Days 2013. No, Earth Day's 2014. And so um, this is, as I'll come to in a minute, but we're in Earth Days. So Earth Day is um, April 22nd every year, started in 1970. And in 2014, we were having Francis Moore LePay, who is the author of Diet for a Small Planet, and then has had a lot of other books since then. Um, and as we were planning it, there were just a lot of different entities around town that were really interested in, in coming together to do things focused around environmental conservation. And so, um, Earth Days um, brought together dozens of organizations to do different things in the community, but then we thought we needed a, a, an entity to kind of keep these things going throughout the year, and so we formed um, Greening Vermilion. And so talking about Earth Days, it is Earth Days now. So Earth Day is one day, April 22nd, but in Vermilion we do Earth Days, so about a week of activities um, surrounding Earth Day, either before Earth Day or after um, Earth Day. And so this year, unfortunately, you know, maybe next week would be nicer in terms of the weather, but uh, we didn't know that in time. So we're doing Earth Days this week. Um, started yesterday where there were activities um, in the, the student in the muck, where there was an Earth Day fair. Um, there was a documentary showing at the Coyote Twin yesterday. Um, and then the keynote lecture for it is tonight. And I'll go through some more of the activities. Um, but why we did Earth Days instead of Earth Day is just because there were so many different organizations interested in doing something for Earth Day that spreading it out over a longer period of time seemed desirable. And so that then, you know, we can help promote the different groups. And so, you know, for Earth Days this year, it's dozens of organizations that are coming together to help put this on. And so Greening Vermilion does some of the overall coordinating for Earth Days, but really it's dozens of organizations um, that are putting it together and it really is a community-wide series of events. Um, and so on each of the tables, there's one of the schedules um, of Earth Days. This is that middle part cropped off. Um, and all of this information that I have today would be at the website greeningvermilion.org. Um, but so as I said that we launched off Earth Days yesterday with the Earth Day Fair and the Muck, which also included a local um, food fair. So um, Prairie Sun Organics, Hikus Family Farm, um, and some other farms donated food to have free food available for people um, in the Muck. And the events span from things on campus um, to things in the community, things that are geared more towards um, adults, uh, things that are more family friendly, um, more socializing things, more information, um, delivering things, and so we are hopefully trying to reach a broad range of audience by doing the different Earth Days activities. Um, and so, as I said, so today we're on Tuesday, so to, uh, from three to seven, the Ufford Hills is having their country market and petting zoo, and at least the weather is cooperating for, for today on that. Um, and then, as I said, there's the um, Earth Days keynote lecture tonight. And so this year, something we're doing different for the keynote lecture is we're having it be a, a joint lecture between the USD Diversity Symposium and Earth Days. And so, um, with an idea that um, I think we've tried to do in multiple years and we continue to try to do to show that environmental conservation, um, you know, isn't, isn't its own box, that it really spreads to a lot of fields and there's a lot of intersectionality with a lot of other um, 
areas and a lot of other topics. And so um, Lamont Sellers, the vice president of diversity, uh, and I were really interested in seeing if we can have a joint lecture for the diversity symposium with the idea of really highlighting the fact that social justice and environmental um, sustainability, you know, really, really link closely. And so our, our keynote speaker is Peterson Toscano. Um, and as you can see, his lecture is Everything is Connected, an Evening of Stories, Most Weird, Many True. And when I say lecture, um, my background is in the sciences, and so I'm used to that. But he is, he's not giving a lecture. He's a performance artist. And so he does um, skits of people, like one-act plays, where he takes on personas. And so that was one of the other things that we were interested in doing for Earth Days, that sometimes environmental conservation things and social justice topics um, can seem doomy and gloomy, but of course that's not, I think a lot of us who are in the sustainability field don't, don't perceive it that way, that really there's a lot of hope and there's a lot of opportunity um, around you know, making the world a more desirable place. And so um, what Peterson does is he uses humor, and so he's a comedian, an actor, and uses that as a way of engaging different groups in talking about issues that they otherwise might not have thought would be connected. And so tonight, um, his, his talk will definitely include things about linking climate change to LGBTQ issues and um, really focusing on that intersectionality, that these topics that might seem um, disconnected are in fact um, interconnected. Um, and his interest in environmental conservation and in sustainability came through climate change and really not having an environmental background, but really having some realizations that, you know, this is something that, that's really relevant for, for everyone and it's not, you know, it's not only an environmentalist issue. And so um, if any of you are available, hope to see you tonight. It's in Farber Hall, so in Old Main, um, tonight at 7 o'clock. Um, some of the other events, so on Wednesday, we're having a hike at Mulberry Bend. As of now, it is still um, going, I suspect. So if any of you have been to Mulberry Bend, so it's over the either the Newcastle Bridge or the Vermilion Bridge, I guess whichever way you're going. Um, on the other side, on top of the bluff, on the Nebraska side, they've put in trails, you know, in the last couple years that go down the bluff. I suspect that we won't be hiking down the bluff just because we're getting more snow tonight probably. Um, but there's at least the hike up there and the National Park Service, you know, is, is excited to get people out to Mulberry Bend because it is a newer trail to let people know that it's out there and there's a lot of, um, you know, birding and other opportunities um, out at Mulberry Bend. And so um, it's possible that that could get canceled, but as of now, I've been in communication and we're still gonna have it, just probably less of a hike, and that's 6 p.m. Um, tomorrow. And for any of these, um, more information is at thegreeningvermilion.org. Um, then on Thursday is an early out day for the, the schools. And so the early out movie that that is being shown is The Lorax, which of course is adapted from Dr. Seuss's book, The Lorax, so an environmental um, theme for that showing. And then probably the biggest event of Earth Days is Green Thursday on the Plots. And so um, the VCDC is one of the, I mean, is a major partner in that. And of course the VCDC does um, Thursday on the Plots throughout the summer. And so Green Thursday on the Plots, um, all of these, this is our fifth year in doing Earth Days. So this is the fifth year in doing Green Thursday on the Plots um, is a way to kick off the Thursday on the Plot series, um, but it's a little different than the other ones, so we will have live music. Um, there will be food available, but there's also going to be, um, I think, between 15 and 25 different booths of different organizations in town um, that relate to environmental conservation in some way. The bouncy house will still be there, the face painting will still be there, and so, you know, a that one will be a range of activities, you know, for families and hopefully just getting the community together. Um, with, you know, so bringing people together and then also having the educational component to it. And I think Thursday so far, the weather is looking like it's gonna hold out. So, so we're hopeful um, about that. Then on um, Saturday, we're having a Spirit Mound Star Party. And so President Abbott is having his red tie celebration earlier in the evening, but I think by 8.30, if, if folks are done, you can go out to Spirit Mound and there'll be people um, and we'll do um, interpretations of the stars. And of course, Spirit Mound is a nice place to do it because it's dark you know, around it. And so it's a nice place to look at the stars. And particularly in the summer, I know, um, at least from students, and I think broadly other people, it's a nice place to go, you know, to climb to the top of Spirit Mound, and it makes for a really nice view during the day, of course, but then 
also at night. And so um, at the star party, there'll be you know people to kind of explain the constellations more, um, but people would be welcome to be there at any point. And then on Sunday is the Tour de Verm bike ride. And so um, as you heard, you know, with the, the bike helmets that in Vermilion, we're really trying to um, increase Vermilion as being a bikeable and walkable city. And so the, the city is doing the bicycling or the bicycle master plan, um, and they're in the process of, of still doing that. And so the Tour de Verme is being sponsored by the Bark Barking Dogs um, Bicycling Club and the Living River Group of the Sierra Club. And so it'll start at the high school and then um, the police will block off the streets in one of the routes that's being proposed in the bicycle master plan. And so we can kind of take over the streets and then ride through uh, town to Barstow Park. And you'll note with this one, you know, highlighting safety that helmets um, will be required for the event. Uh, and so uh, as a way of helping to show people that really Vermilion is a very bikeable town and help increase that culture of bikeability. And so a lot of these things, I think there is with the different activities that are already going around, you know, so that you all have been giving away bike helmets for years. How many years do you know? 22 years, you know, so that these are efforts that have been going on a long time. And so to help build on them, you know, and the more we can get people out biking on the road in a safe way, um, it starts to create that culture of, you know, it's very normal for people to bike around Vermilion. And on campus, we're um, trying to also support that idea with the bike share program. And so an idea, if you see people out biking around um, in a safe way and they understand how to do it, you'd be more likely to think, okay, actually, I don't need to drive there. I can just you know, bike around town, um, because of course we do have a very bikeable town. And then in addition to these, so these are all um, available to the public, they're free, um, hopefully everyone comes. There are a lot of activities that are happening in the school, and so on Friday is the kindergarten, um, the kindergarten um, in Earth Day event at Cotton Park where there's different stations for the kindergartners. There's the bike helmet giveaway on Friday also. Um, the elementary school has also been doing various art projects. There'll be displays about the Earth Day's art projects at the public library. Um, I know they'll get there by Thursday. I'm not sure when they're setting them up. But so these are, these are all the events open to the public, but there really is a, a much broader range of activities that are happening. And then also to highlight that um, you know, it really is the effort of hundreds of people doing Earth Day's things. And so it's really remarkable and delightful um, in a town like Vermilion that we can get, you know, well over a thousand people um, who are doing Earth Day's things, which I don't know, you know, if in a lot of communities you get such a large percentage of your population really engaged in some of these activities. And so that's a really delightful thing about Vermilion. Um, to give you some other ideas about different campaigns that Greening Vermilion does. So right now we'll be doing Earth Days, you know, and that'll go through Sunday. Um, but of course, as an organization, we're doing activities throughout the year. Something we started a couple day, a couple years ago um, was the Adopt-A-Drain campaign. Uh, and the idea between, behind the Adopt-A-Drain campaign is stormwater um, almost everywhere, um, but certainly in Vermilion, it doesn't go to the wastewater treatment plant, it goes right into the rivers. And so some people aren't aware of, you know, whatever happens to be on the road, if it goes down the stormwater plants, it goes into the river. In Vermilion, that means it goes into the Vermilion River. And then of course, the Vermilion River very quickly dumps into the, um, the Missouri River. And of course, in town, we get our water from, you know, the shallow aquifer that, that's by the Missouri River. And so, you know, even if for our own self-interest, it's important that we're thoughtful about what we're putting in our water bodies around here. And so the adopt a drain campaign um, exists in many cities. You know, when you travel around and look for it, you'll see that in a lot of places there's signage around drains because there is this um, common misconception that the, the water that goes down stormwater drains gets treated before it goes in, in a water body and it doesn't. And so around Vermilion, artists have painted, um, and artists very broadly defined, you know, um, high school students through um, community members, you know, people with a range of um, art training. Certainly we've had students from the, the College of Fine Arts doing paintings. Um, but paint on the drains that highlight the fact that, um, you know, the water that goes down the, the stormwater drains will go right to the river. And so 
Um, in the past, we've done, the, we've done the drain paintings during Earth Days, and we thought, oh, let's not do it this year. The weather can be so hard to plan around, and so I'm glad we didn't. So we're going to do the drain paintings in the summer when the, when the weather is a little nicer. And we likely will be doing some paintings of new drains, but we'll certainly be touching up the um, existing drains that exist, and so going around and um, after a couple years of getting the wear and tear of being by the roads, they need to get touched up. And so that is an opportunity if anyone is interested in, well, there's different volunteer opportunities. So one, you can sponsor a drain, um, either one of these drains where it's custom artwork um, or we have a stencil that we paint on the drain so people can sponsor those, um, or you could, um, paint the drain. You know, we're always looking for artists. And the art really can range from this year, you know, you can be an artist and come up with the design and paint the drain, or um, if you would have more like my level of artistic ability, I might be at the level of touching up other people's art. And so if you're interested in doing any of that from the range of you're an artist and want to, you know, paint a beautiful picture on the drains, to you're willing to help touch up the drains, to you want to be a sponsor of a drain um, and give money financially, there's the range of options there. And you can either, um, at the website, there's a form to submit information about that. You certainly could email uh, me or there's the Greening Vermilion um, email address. And so that's something that when the weather's a little nicer, we're gonna go back through and, and be doing that this summer. And the city has been really happy to sponsor that with us. And so um, part of the stormwater management plan of cities is includes um, public education. And so one of the goals of Greening Vermilion is really to um, interact with other organizations and help link among organizations. And so, you know, the city's happy in doing this in that it helps contribute to the city's stormwater management plan because it's doing some of that public education. Um, and so if you'd like to get involved, that would be great. Um, another campaign that we are doing is the Bring Your Bag campaign, and that started uh, maybe three or four years ago. Um, but an idea with a lot of sustainability things, there's really small behavioral changes we can make that end up having you know, a big impact. And so one easy behavioral change that we could make is rather than using single-use plastic bags when we get groceries is to use a reusable grocery bag. And so um, part of the campaign has involved giving away these green um, bring your bag bags. Um, but the idea of the campaign, so you know, part of that, okay, then there's some number of bags that are in circulation, people can be using them, great. But the reason we chose this conspicuous lime green is really an underlying hope of the campaign is that it, it um, helps change social norms, that people see that it really is very easy to bring your reusable bag, it's a small behavioral change that you can make. Um, but we use more than a trillion worldwide, a trillion single-use plastic bags a year. And so, you know, our efforts to reduce them, you know, can have an impact. And once you get the behavioral change, it's relatively easy to stick with it. And so helping to create a culture in Vermilion where it really is very normal to um, to bring a reusable bag rather than, than a single-use plastic bag. And I think that's also, um, to go back to Earth Days and the bicycle riding, that's also part of it. You know, the goals of some of these things, I think, um, are to help change social norms. Because if you would see people, you know, biking everywhere, it becomes, you know, cool and very normal and, pe and people will do it. If it seems something that is out of the social norm, it's less likely that people will adopt those behaviors. And so part of what Greening Vermilion is doing is thinking about where are there ways that we can do activities that help kind of change these social norms and just nudge people towards activities that might um, be better for the environment or, you know, increase social justice in some way. So that's another um, campaign that we have going. Um, there's, I think, at least one of the Visioning Vermilion books on the table. This was a, um, we finished this, I think, in early 2016, um, but it's one of my particular areas of interest in terms of sustainability. I think visioning is extremely important. So um, sometimes in all planning, we get um, focused on the what do we think we can do, you know, so we do planning about what do we think is possible within some relatively short time frame, um, but it's possible that those things we think that are possible might not actually be desirable in the long term. And so what we might, might be moving towards in terms of goals might not actually suit what our long-term vision might be. And so I'm a strong proponent of the fact of doing a process of visioning to say what would we love in the future, and then, you know, you can start seeing seeds of it growing. And then you can think, oh yes, that aligns with this thing that we would love, that's something that we should nurture. And so what we did with Visioning Vermilion um, in creating this booklet, we talked to about 600 
um, people in Vermilion, USD students, um, community members of a variety of ages, and, and had them say what is it they would love to see in Vermilion, um, compiled those and then made them into kind of five, um, five stories about different aspects of Vermilion that would incorporate some of those ideas. And the goal of this was not that that was the end of the visioning process. So one of the things that's really important with visions is that they're shared. And so hopefully this is a tool that can keep the conversation going about what is it that we would love to see in Vermilion. And sometimes it's handy to have you know, a document where you can see what other people have thought about as a way of spurring conversation. And so it's our goal um, that this visioning Vermilion can help continue the conversation of what is it we'd love to see in Vermilion so that our planning makes sure that you know, we're moving towards those things that we love and not only what we think might be uh, possible. And so if anyone has um, ideas of where they'd like to use this or would like more booklets, I certainly have more and would be happy to continue to um, expand this process. But the hope really was that the creating the booklet and in talking to the hundreds of people in town was not the end of the project. It was part of um, this longer process of thinking about, you know, what might make Vermilion the most um, desirable place we could imagine. And then the uh, a final activity that we do in terms of events of bringing people together is we have an art of sustainability. And so this year's was the sixth annual art of sustainability. Um, this happens to align really well with Peter Tis Peterson Toscano being here, but the, the Earth Day's keynote speaker. Um, sometimes with environmental sustainability, there might be the idea that that is a natural science thing, um, and it, or it's an environmentalist thing, um, and that it's not as obvious that it's something that involves art, and art is intimately involved in and has a lot to contribute. And so... Um, this, the idea of this is to highlight the role that art plays in sustainability, and it's an event that um, happens in the fall. I think usually it has been in October. It'll continue in the future, but you know, if anyone has ideas or would like to contribute in various ways, um, the seventh annual Art of Sustainability you know, will probably be in October um, again. And so that there's these different activities throughout the year where we can engage with Vermilion in different ways to do environmental sustainability work. So, you know, Earth Days in the spring, adopt a drain, um, certainly happening in the summer, probably also in the fall, um, the art of sustainability happening in the fall, and then some of these other activities that are just ongoing throughout the year. Um, and so, one other thing is we have a friends program. So, a friends of greening Vermilion. And so, if you would be interested, on, um, the brochures on your table give more information kind of about Greening Vermilion in general. Um, but to become a friend um, on our website, it's $25 a year. Um, you can go to greeningvermilion.org and then there's the button you can click on to become a Friends of Greening Vermilion. Um, we'll make sure to certainly keep you aware of the different activities you're doing um, and, and or instead of. But the monetary donations are great because it helps us, you know, fund the activities we're doing, but we also are really happy to get volunteers. And so, you know, if um, a monetary donation doesn't work, but you really are interested in getting involved, there's really never, end, never an end, I don't think, to the amount of, you know, help we could use for various events. And so if you're interested in volunteering, I think there's nearly unlimited um, opportunities for that too. So that's what I have prepared for that. Do folks have questions that they would like to direct at me? Yes. So when you talk about um, the painting on the um, drain, mm -hmm. what's the cost of sponsoring one? So the um, hand-painted drains, it's $100 to sponsor the hand-painted drain, and the stenciled drains are $25. Can we do that in our neighborhoods? Mostly, yes. There's some drains in town that are not allowed to be stenciled. So for example, Cherry Street, because it's a state highway, can't be stenc can't be painted on. But mostly, yes, we think we could accommodate that. And I would talk with me maybe directly and we'll make sure that I'm not saying something we can't do. But mostly, most drains in town um, can be sponsored. And what we've done so far is a lot of the really conspicuous places, you know, like by the schools and on Main Street. But right, there are opportunities to do it other places. And as long as it's not you know, disallowed by some code type of thing. The city's been really supportive. Yes? Are you working with the university to continue to encourage them to do more, re uh, more recycling? I go, I don't particularly. I mean, people drink water bottles and have ice cream, and they just seem to throw the, the plastic, and that's all recyclable plastic. So yes. Campus is working. Um, 
is, is really making a concerted effort to try and increase recycling. The one thing is it's slow, um, but now there's the President's Joint Committee on Presidents' Joint Committee on Sustainability. So the Student Government Association and President Abbott um, have a committee, and that's the main focus of it. And we've hired a consulting group to help. And so it is something that campus is working on. And um, Dan Gaston, the director of um, um, of the sports complex, came from Oregon, I think, where. Washington. Okay, where they? I knew the I knew the Northwest. Um, but so anyway, he's very willing to. They're kind of even doing additional things aside from campus. So it is an area that people are working on. It's just sometimes a little slow. It's so it might feel painfully slow, but I know that there are people working on doing it. And then because the city uses um, multi-stream recycling, thinking about. Um, you know, how to make that work on campus when you would need so many bins. But then in the dome, one thing that they have, that even if you don't see recycling, some events they do recycling because afterwards they have people manually, you know, pick up the garbage because I think it ends up all over. And anyway, they sort it then. So even sometimes at the dome, you might not see the recycling, but after the fact, you know, they're manually going through it and sorting it. But I don't think they're going through the garbage bins. So if it gets thrown away, then... I think it is thrown away. But yeah, that's an ongoing effort that hopefully in a couple of years will be great. <laughs> Any other questions from folks? Well, thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it.